I've been teaching English for more than 15 years and one of the most common questions I get is how do I become fluent in English? Now that's an interesting question and yes I do have the answer so today I've chosen eight things that you can start doing right now that will make a spectacular improvement to your English level and if you follow these steps I promise you I promise you that you will become fluent. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Let Them Talk. And today we're going to talk about how to become fluent in English. Uh, and I'm going to start by saying what you don't need, okay? Firstly, you don't need to be young. I know this from many years of uh, teaching, and I have students in their 50s, in their 60s, and in their 70s who learn very quickly. Now, they say, they say that younger people have quicker brains, and uh, that might be true, but older people have experience, and that's important. You know, my great uncle was going to evening classes to learn Italian when he was 90 years old, and he was making progress. Having said that, there was a problem, not with the grammar or the vocabulary, but he was deaf, and he couldn't hear the teacher. So, whatever age you are, you can do it. But if you are 90, get yourself a hearing aid. Secondly, I hear many people say, in order to speak English, you need to live in an English-speaking country. This is completely false. I know many, many people who speak excellent English, but have never even set foot in an English-speaking country. Of course, if you are in England or a, another English-speaking country, that's useful if you're listening to English all the time. But these days, there are so many resources online. You can still speak English really well in your own country. <music> Far and away the most important thing is motivation. If you're motivated and you do the necessary work, then that's all you need. Let me, let me ask you a question. Imagine you live in Bogota, unless you live in Bogota, in which case you don't need to imagine. And you're learning English and you're passionate about English and you spend all your free time learning and studying or you go to Toronto but you're not very motivated you skip your class you meet your friends you, you take some selfies you watch TV where are you going to learn English quicker yes Bogota of course so it doesn't matter where you are in the world if you're motivated you will learn. End of story. Okay? And if you're not motivated, you won't learn. So my first tip is find the passion, love English, love learning, and it will become a piece of cake and you will, you will succeed. Okay? Don't tell me you don't have the time because if you love doing something, you'll find the time. <music> My next tip is reading. I can't stress how important reading is. You know, when I have a new student in the class, within a few minutes of talking with them, I know if they read a lot in English. It's clear from the vocabulary they use and the expressions they use. So, find a subject that interests you and read. It doesn't matter if it's a book, a magazine, or something on the web. Just read every day. 
and make sure it's something just a little bit too difficult for you so you get that that challenge but not so difficult that you give up after five minutes okay so that's my tip read so my next tip is find a good language school or a good teacher of course you can learn english without going to school without a teacher but a Good, a good school or teacher can really help in so many ways and make a huge difference. You wouldn't try to become a tennis champion without a coach, would you? And it's the same with English. A good teacher can focus on your needs, can correct your mistakes, can teach you things you didn't know, can improve your grammar, your pronunciation and much, much more. Of course, I work at the best language school in the world, uh, Let Them Talk, which is based in Paris. And uh, if, if you are in Paris, you should definitely study there and bring all your friends and all your family. But if you can't, I'm sure that in your town, you can find yourself uh, a good teacher, someone who knows the grammar, knows the language, can explain, and that will really really make a difference so my tip is find a good teacher or a good language school so my next tip is write so this is a story i often see somebody speaks quite confidently and quite fluently in english but then one day you see his or her written English and it's a disaster. It's like it was written by a child of five. Okay, so writing is quite a different skill to speaking. And I'm sure it's the same in, in, in your language. The vocabulary and the expressions you use in writing are not exactly the same as when you speak. So you need to write. It'll challenge you. It'll get you to think about the words and the construction of the sentences. And not only will it be beneficial to your written English, but it'll help uh, when speaking too. So write something every day and don't just write things that you already know. Challenge yourself. Even if you're writing an email, sit down, reflect choose your words carefully maybe write uh, some nice uh, expressions that you've learned it, and it doesn't matter if you make a mistake people will forgive grammar mistakes okay but you don't want to sound childish so my tip is write <laughs> So my next point is listening. This point is quite easy, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but listen to the radio, watch TV shows in the original language without subtitles or with English subtitles if you must. Uh, listen to something like uh, TED, so TED Talks. That's a great resource at TED.com. Uh, whatever. Just uh, one important thing that I mentioned before, listen to stuff that's challenging and a little difficult and then make a note of the vocabulary you didn't understand and then listen or watch it again and again and again until you understand everything. Okay, so that's my tip. Listen. My next tip is speaking. Now, try and speak as much as you can, okay? If you've got English-speaking friends, that's, that's good. Or if you can join some English conversation groups in your area, that's uh, fantastic. But even if you can't, then practice with your non-native friends or, 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 or speak to your mother. And even if there is no one, even if there is no one and you live in a, a hut in the mountains and there's nobody else around then uh, speak to the goats speak to the trees speak to yourself 
as long as you get the brain working and mechanically getting the words out so that it becomes natural and fluent, okay? You can't learn how to drive a car from a book and you can't speak English without speaking. So speak every day. My next tip is get a good dictionary and use it. Whenever you come across a new word, a word that you don't know, look it up. Doesn't matter if it's online or a physical dictionary. Find out the meaning, find some examples, look up the etymology and then use it in conversation or in writing. That way you'll remember it. Okay, so and it will boost your vocabulary. So here's a word, discombobulate. There you are, that's a challenge for you. If you don't know what it means, uh, look it up, write an example of it in the uh, comments or use it with your friends. So have realistic goals. You cannot learn to play a musical instrument or learn advanced computer or become a great tennis player in a few days or a few weeks and it's the same with learning a language. Any complex task takes time, takes effort, takes hard work so don't be unrealistic with your goals. Don't look into the future and say oh, in six months I want to be fluent in English. Instead Focus on the now. Every day learn 10 new words, learn a couple of idioms, learn a piece of grammar, read, write, listen and speak. And I promise you that you will make rapid progress. Okay, so there you are. I hope I haven't discombobulated you with so much information. But follow these rules and you will be fluent. Simple, huh? Thank you.